Hello everyone, this is Chancy and welcome to my first devlog of the Princess of Seas, the overview. In this video, I will show you what the game is and some of the basic designs. The Princess of Seas is a sea sailing game. Players just control a ship and travel around the world. As you can see, it is greatly inspired by the game Uncharted Waters, New Horizon. Oh, sorry, not this horizon, but this one. In the Uncharted Waters, you could explore the charming world, visit each city, upgrade your ship, and go for a pirate battle. Well, this game is pretty good, I love it, and it was one of my favorite games when I was a kid. Except it was published in the year 1993. After that, the company has published a series of Uncharted Water games, but none of the games interest me. After the inspiring Oh, sorry. The notorious Uncharted Water games in 2004, there has been no Uncharted Water games released for 18 years. Okay, so that's why I make my own game, The Princess of Seas. Let's go through the design of this game. In the very beginning, I just want to make a game that is the same as the Uncharted Waters. It means the game is having a giant map in the game with the same land shape as the real world. Add some ships in it, so we can travel with it. Place some cities so the player can do trading and buy new stuff. Pick some places and hide treasures that are waiting to be discovered. That sounds good for an indie game. However, given it's 2022, merely controlling a ship and wandering around the world should be not enough. I must add something more interest to the game. My first idea is open world design. Just like the Breath of the Wild, Red Dead Redemption, The Elder Scrolls, and Horizon. An open world game means the player can explore everything in the open area freely, and there should be a lot to play beside the main quest. Well, this is challenging, but I believe I can make it, because I can use a technique called procedural generation. Procedural generation literally means to generate something procedurally, or in another word, to develop something during runtime. A good example should be the game Terraria. Every time we create a new world, a completely fresh map is generated. This could add a lot of variation and interest to the game. Also, it could save some of my energy because I don't need to do it manually anymore. Great. However, I must be careful. Open world gaming style and procedure generated world could be the key to a good game, but there is no guarantee. Because this procedure generated world usually share a similarity. Although the map varies in shape, size, and many many small details, there are only several biomes in the world and limited game mechanics. After exploring every detail of one single world, well, the player has also explored other worlds. I must find a way to address that. The only good news is, I don't need to worry about it at the beginning. Cool. We have a big picture of this game. The very next step is to pick the game engine for development. I do have some game development experience, but always a really old framework called XNA. It was firstly released in 2006 and officially abandoned 7 years later. Soon, the XNA is sequenced by another framework called Monogame. But the latest version is released on August 10, 2020, and there are only 9 versions released in 6 years. I have no idea if it's abandoned or not. I prefer to use a better developed and carefully maintained engine for this game. After some research, I found three candy keys, Godot Engine, Unreal Engine, and Unity. The first thing I noticed is that the Unreal Engine is developing with C++. Since I have been using c -sharp for quite a long time and I have no interest in studying a completely new language, I'm not going to pick Unreal. As for the Godot Engine and Unity, they both use c -sharp. They share similarity interface and development flow. They run their asset store and both sell some assets at a fairly low price. Well, I think both are fine for me. 
After some more careful research, I found that Godot has fewer developers than Unity and even fewer topics on the Stack Overflow. I don't know why, but since everyone else picks the Unity, why shouldn't I do it? So that's why I picked the Unity as the game engine. Good. With the game ideas form and the game engine selected, I can start developing. I just do this project in my spare time for fun and I have no interest in gathering a small team for it. It means I have to do all the work. The game design, project architecture design, code development, bug hunting, visual assets model, music composing, and game balancing. Phew! That would be a lot of work and I don't think I can easily make this game in years. Actually, this project is already started in November 2020. With around 16 months work, I can eventually run the game and do a basic demonstration. I don't believe this game could be finished soon, but I will keep working. Okay, I think that's enough for today. Please press like and do subscribe if you like my game. I will post my thoughts and details during the development. See you next time.